the school at Berrien Springs, St. Anita, California, November 5, 1901. Dear Brother McGann and Brother Sutherland, I was very sorry, Brother McGann, to hear of your indisposition and serious illness. We thank the Lord that he has heard our many prayers in your behalf. I shall probably see you soon, for after a week of conviction, I have decided to leave for the East. By my former decision not to leave home, I came to a crisis in my experience, and I will leave for New York City tomorrow morning, if the Lord will, and this seems to me to be his will. I am surprised that there should be talk of separating Brother and Sister Salisbury from the faculty of the Berrien Springs School. Did not the Lord discern what should be done in reference to this school question when he so graciously instructed you not to allow your school faculty to be broken up? The question was asked, if Brother and Sister Salisbury are not especially needed in the school and are needed elsewhere, should not they be permitted to go? I told them that circumstances might alter cases, but all the light given me is that a mistake is being made in planning for members of your faculty to go to Europe to engage in the schoolwork. The Lord desires to have the same faculty if they are disposed to put their whole being into the work, taking hold in faith and with good courage. If they rely upon the Lord, he will be their strength and their efficiency but they must keep advancing in the upward way, gaining victory after victory in their onward progress. Because of opposite theories, they need not be faint-hearted. Have we not had to breast opposition from the beginning in any forward-upward movement? Go forward, brethren, saying, I will not fail nor be discouraged. Brother McGann, say to Brother Sutherland, talk faith, pray faith, and go forward. Those who have ever been walking in unbelief will throw their past experience and knowledge as stumbling blocks in your way. But in the words it is written, you have the staff that you should take. Draw from God, hoping, praying, believing. Always be fragrant in spirit. Speak pleasantly. When I see others so disagreeable in the expression of their feelings, I dislike the spiritual atmosphere so much that I feel like opening the windows heavenward and letting the fragrance of the presence of the Lord shine in, thus scattering the disagreeable fog. Do not be in haste to reveal the spirit of unbelief. Close the windows earthward, and then sing the songs of Zion. Perfect confidence in God is essential. Be not faithless, but believing. Thus far the Lord has helped you. Although his overworked servant has been afflicted, in his great mercy the Lord has spared his life. Then rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, have faith in God and rejoice. There is much to be done. You now need to educate, educate, educate. Let no one take away your needed facilities. Have you a printing outfit? This you must have, if you do not have it, for you will want to do much of your own printing, issuing the books and other publications which you need in your work. You need the very best educator to teach typesetting and press work to the students, giving them the education essential for this class of work. You also need the very best and most experienced bookkeeper that you can secure. Let bookkeeping be one of the regular studies. Make it a specialty. Voice culture should be taught in your school. Do not lightly pass over this matter, for if the expression is defective, all the knowledge that shall be obtained will be of but very little use. The cultivation of the voice is of the greatest importance in order that grace and dignity may be brought into the impartation of truth. By learning correctly to use the voice in speaking, many who are weak-chested may save their lives. Make the student stand erect, throwing back his shoulders. The ladies especially need to cultivate the voice. In every reading exercise, require the students to speak the words distinctly, clearly pronouncing even the last syllable. Teach the students not to let their voice die away at the end of the sentence. Require a full, clear, round tone of voice to the very close, including the last syllable. Many who use their vocal organs in so careless a way that they can scarcely be called vocal organs, if allowed to continue speaking defectively, will die of consumption. For want of exercise, the lungs will close their healthful action. 
in the respiration there is not a full inhalation of pure vital air to give nourishment to the lungs consequently they become diseased educate all to speak slowly do not allow any hurried reading or rapid delivery teach the student to inhale the god-given vital air and then in the exhalation clearly express their words thus vital properties of the air are utilized Never allow an indistinct utterance to pass unnoticed. Let the speech be as perfect as possible. Accept nothing else. By cultivating the voice, a grand work will be done, not only in learning how to breathe, inhaling the pure life-giving air, and exhaling by speaking in loud, clear tones, but also in the preservation of life. In speaking, there need be no strain put upon the throat or the lungs. The abdomen is the powerful engine from which the organs of speech are to receive the power which keeps them in perfect tone and expression. There needs to be an economizing of nervous strength in order that the voice may be perfected, thus enabling laborers to speak in such a way that the truth will lose none of its force and beauty by being bunglingly presented. This subject of voice needs special attention. May the Lord help you as teachers to see the bearing on which this subject sustains to the communication of the truth. Workers should know how to use the voice in such a way that in speaking they will properly represent the grand subjects of present truth. If the mind and the will are set to make progress and advancement, there will be improvement in the forcible presentation of the scriptures. You should endeavor to train the very best class of workers who as teachers and ministers of the gospel will be able to educate others. I think that if it is possible, you should have Elder Prescott connected with your faculty during the first term. This first term must be a success. The Lord desires our brother Prescott to learn many things in educational lines. His ideas of education are to be different from what they once were. And I thank the Lord that he has been giving him the light that is so much needed by the students who shall go forth as teachers. All who now are connected with the work of education must not follow the same, same old methods. Our schools should be more after the order of the schools of the prophets. Be of good courage in the Lord. Do not talk unbelief. Brethren, look on, not on the dark side. The Lord has a work for you to do. You need more faith, more hope. Commit the soul to God as unto a faithful creator. If for the time being Brother McGann should go to Nashville, Los Angeles, or St. Helena, the entire change would be a blessing to him. For a time he needs to be carefully and tenderly handled and located wherever his mind will be most at rest. Do not at present let Brother and Sister Salisbury leave you. Hold them until you know that it is duty for them to go. In much love, signed Ellen G. White.